Welcome back to another Financial Friday. So since we're in the heat of football season, I thought I'd use this analogy to better describe what a CFO role could be. Um, I struggled with putting into words what it is that we do for our clients and how it is we can help them with our CFO services. So I've come up with this analogy. We're gonna talk through it today and then um, there'll be some handouts too that we'll post so that you guys can come back to this reference if you want to. So a CFO as a quarterback is really the analogy that I wanted to talk about. I had um, a coworker of mine one time ask me why I was in on all these meetings, why I was at the decision table with all these things. And the answer I gave at the time is, well, everything affects finance. Every decision affects money, whether it's an employee, a hire decision, or whether it's a benefits decision. All of those things affect finance. So that was the reason that I gave. Um, but if I think about that a little bit more, I was involved in all those things because of my knowledge of the team as well as our opponents and bringing that back to the football analogy. So a quarterback can be thought of as a signal caller, somebody who can see the whole field um, on, from the position they're at so they can see everything. Um, and then they also have to decide at which points who to give the ball to, to move it forward. So if we think about the football analogy and the CFO being the quarterback, this will help really understand our roles and we'll talk about who's, who's the opposing team in most businesses. So finance is important to every business. This analogy can be used across the board. And uh, the uh, so it's who your opponents are in this content is going to be the same people. So whether it's the IRS and that, you know, do, not dodging them, but trying to work with them or work against them um, in certain things is important. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So we need to understand what this layout is going to be and what the who the players on the field really are. And um, so I have some fun analogies to think about there. So the football itself is the organization and we're trying to make progress. Right? We're trying to move the ball down the field. We're trying to move the organization down the field. And the CFO is the quarterback. So we have our CFO, also our quarterback. And why this analogy works will make a lot more sense once we put all the other players on the, on the field. The other players we have is our offensive line. So we have our centers, our guards, and our tackles. So the center is really like the controller, and the rest of the line is either our insurance agents or our accounts payable people, our accounts receivable people, general accountants. That's our line of scrimmage. That's our offensive line. That's the people who are feeding the CFO information. So the information is going from the controller or the accounting team in the organization to the CFO to figure out how to disseminate it to move it down the field. Make sense? Okay. So then we have running backs. And we have wide receivers, probably on both sides. And we have a halfback, all those fun positions on the team. So I want to think of our running backs as our bankers. So those are people that we need as an organization to move our organization forward or to just do business. So I'm going to need a checking account. I'm going to probably need loans at some point. I'm going to need some type of payment services. And that can all be done at a bank, at a traditional bank, or you can do it different ways. But I need these people. They're on my team. They're part of our team in the organization. They're not employees by any means, but they're a part of our team and a part of what it needs, what we need to be an organization to be successful. Now our wide receivers are CPAs or tax advisors. So those people are also super important because we need to move the field, the ball down the field in certain in certain ways and having a, a trusted advisor in the tax realm is very important to make big strides down the field. So I'm gonna erase this because it's backwards and probably a little bit hard to see given um, what we're filming here. So we have our CPAs over here, or let's just say tax advisors because they don't necessarily have to be a CPA but they have to be very familiar with tax. So we're gonna use these different people 
in different plays, right? Now the one thing that, so then we have our banker here, and we're gonna have more than one banker. So banking relationships are very important to your business, but it's also very important that you don't put all your eggs in one basket. I would say you have a really strong first relationship and then you also have a second relationship. And why that is, is because um, the actual personal relationship with a banker is what sets banks apart. Um, I know my banker friends don't like it when I use this an analogy, but lending money is a commodity. So it's just, you're just, it might be a quarter of a point interest rate, which really doesn't matter that much when interest rates are this low that you're competing against. But it's really that relationship. It's that person on the other line that's gonna pick up the phone and gonna say, yes, I can do this deal and I can do it quickly or I can move through these, this um, barrier, remove this barrier for you quickly. That's what di should differentiate your bankers and all the relationships, these people who are calling on you because they wanna be your banker. It's really about building a, a trust relationship and just like you would with any of your employees or any of your other trusted advisors. Now, the thing that sometimes we run into is that these people are, are very busy. Everybody is very busy in the business world right now and they might not always make the best decisions either or always have our back and be thinking forward thinking with us. So if you have a trusted advisor like your star running back that can be your banker and that can be your go-to in those times, that is gonna help you in the long run because they can get creative, they can have thought um, conversations with you and they can be, they can kind of see ahead of it. So if you're, I'm gonna do this, if you're thinking I'm gonna acquire this new business or I'm gonna move into this part of this industry or I'm gonna build this building and having the banker there for you to have those conversations ahead of time makes it a ton easier to make the help move the ball down the field because they're gonna be seeing the things that you don't see. They're gonna be asking the questions. They're gonna know about the place. They're gonna see different holes um, or they're gonna see different opponents and people that are gonna come in and um, make that harder, whether it's the compliance people that they have to work with or other competition because they're out in the market hustling and bustling every day and getting deals done. So your bankers are gonna be a great asset to moving the ball. Why I put them in the running back position versus the um, wide receiver position is because they're also their steady Eddie every day, running your cash management, doing those things. Now I put tax at wide receiver because sometimes they make short gains and sometimes they make big gains. So depending on what your business is and what the transactions are each year that you are running through, sometimes we can have a um, we can have a short a short game where we're just doing our taxes, doing our thing, taking bonus depreciation on an annual basis, doing those things that are going to help mitigate and keep money in the organization, mitigate tax, minimize tax, and keep. Uh, money in the organization that's really where these people are going to help but there's also occasions where they can move us down the field real far so things like i own a building now i did a cost segregation study so now i have a large tax depreciation that is going to lower my tax if i have other things say so if you're a real estate professional that would be an example of that um, we've also ran into situations where the stars aligned and we did a C Corp conversion into an LLC. That's another touchdown from the one yard line on the other side because that opportunity presented itself. But the, the point of that is, is if I'm not communicating with my wide receiver and I'm not seeing them on a regular basis and touching them on a regular basis, they're not gonna be any good. They're not gonna know that I'm gonna go downfield in the next play if I'm not communicating with them. So they can't know that we wanna move the ball here if I'm not communicating. If I keep using the tools that I have back here or if I keep thinking I can do it myself because we can't do it ourselves. And that's really kind of the, the point of the analogy is that the CFO needs the team to be able to accomplish it. So we've covered a little bit about uh, the wide receiver, our running backs being our bankers. Let's talk a little bit about the offensive line. Uh, let me see, here it is. 
Okay, so the offensive line. These are the questions you need to ask yourself. How good is your team at preparing timely and accurate information? So that's really what this offensive line is, is accurate, timely, so that the quarterback or the CFO or the organization with the football gets that information on the organization transferred and then can make good decisions with it. Whether it's a bank decision, whether we're going to our running back, whether it's a tax decision, and we're going to the wide receiver. Now, if you don't have good controls in place, if you don't have good systems and processes in place in your accounting team, then you're making decisions off of information that isn't good. So you might have a hole here that they can get to, so you never even have a you never even have the opportunity to take advantage of that tax situation. You never have the ability to take advantage of that next deal financed by the bank because you have holes in your system. So that's something that I see quite frequently is that our offensive line, who's providing us the ball or providing us information, isn't doing a good job of providing us management information that we can make decisions on. So that's the, the first thing. So if your offensive line, I'll just draw it again because it's getting a little scru scrubbly. If your offensive line has leaks in it, has holes in it, you're not gonna be able to move the ball because the ball is gonna stop here. They're gonna penetrate you all throughout the thing. So if that's your number one. So just like in football, if your line's not strong, the ball's not gonna go anywhere, right? And who's on the other side of the ball? Let's talk a little bit about that. Who's this defense that we're um, playing up against? So this, Defensive line can be a whole bunch of things that are coming in at you, coming in hot. But let's just call the line our competitors. So the people that in our industry that are doing the same thing that we're doing, but just doing it differently. Or they're just our competitors. So there's more than one of us in the market. We can agree to that. Okay, so we have our defensive line. And then we have our linebackers. Let's call these linebackers the Department of Labor. So the Department of Labor exists to help employees, to protect employees and employers on, ta on employee law so that everybody's being treated, treated fairly, all these things. And they have rules and regulations that we have to comply with to play. But occasionally, they might get in here. They might get in here and tackle our organization, tackle our CFO, or even just distract them from being able to make forward thinking decisions. So you get a Department of Labor audit, you get a sales tech audit, all of those things. That's a distraction. That's not gonna help move the ball down the field. It's just gonna distract the CFO. So that's why this analogy works. So we got our linebackers as Department of Labor and other employee regulating bodies because there's a ton of law laws with that. And then we have cornerbacks. I'm probably putting these in the wrong spot because I'm not like a football coach or anything like that, but okay. These actually linebackers should be over there. So we got our cornerbacks, we'll just say right here. Let's call our cornerbacks, um, not the banker themselves, but the regulatory body that regulates the bank that says, no, your debt service coverage ratio is not in alignment, so no, you can't have a loan. That's what this is. So they can be hitting you here. Um, they can be hitting your line, penetrating your line that doesn't have your, um, your financials in an accurate situation, so they can penetrate here. They can penetrate when your other banker, when your banker is trying to run the ball, your running back is trying to run the ball, and it's gonna stop you right at the line because you don't have all your stuff that you need. You don't have um, the proper ratios that they need. Um, there's a handful of ratios that those bankers go off of, and, and we'll talk about those on another Financial Friday those ratios that you gotta, you have to hit or they're just gonna be red flags. So if you just plan for that ahead of time, uh, then it makes it so much easier to get a loan and do those things. Um, so the last, the last, so since we had our CPA friends, our advisors, our tax advisors on the offensive side as our wide receivers, 
We have the IRS as the big X as our safeties. And why they're out there is because they don't, sometimes they don't see a ton of action, but when they do, when they do intercept that ball, it becomes really painful. So they can intercept it and they can bring it back down here. And why that is, is one, they may be, penalize you with the taxes that you may have owed. Um, but the bigger thing is that they just take up a lot of your time. And time is the one thing that we can't recreate in this life. So that's the only thing that has scarcity in this life. So if, our, if we get an IRS audit, whether that be in the 1 million forms that we have to send to them every month um, with your, or not every month, every quarter and year. So whether it's your corporate returns, your personal returns, your 941s that you're filing um, because you have employees, any of that stuff. So they just slow you down um, or they could intercept the ball. Um, they could intercept the ball and push you back too. So that's why I use the analogy as the IRS agents as your safety because they're not always in there, but they, um, when they do intercept the ball, it makes it kind of really hard to move forward. So those are the football players on the field and I'll have this handout um, uploaded as well. So those are the people. So I also wanted to talk about the CFO and the quarterback and why, those, why that comparison or that analogy works as like who you are as a human being, being the CFO or being the quarterback. And um, so I got these things off the internet. Um, the what, what are the qualities of an elite NFL quarterback? Um, the URL will be on the, on the handout as well. So the first one is a combination of superior arm strength and pinpoint accuracy. And how that relates to a CFO is they're educated and provide timely, accurate information. And that's not just them. Usually it's a team of people behind them. For a quarterback, they have a sixth sense connection with their receivers and ability to place the ball where only the receiver can get it and not the IRS, not our safety. And for the CFO, they, knows, they know strengths and weaknesses of the team. So what I mean by that is if we are pushing the boundaries of the knowledge of our CPA or our tax advisor, then we, we have an awareness of that, or I sure hope we have an awareness of that, so that if we have to call in another, another receiver that maybe is better in that position, um, then we can do that, and we can do that if depending on the play that we wanna make. So that's really what that is about, is knowing our team and knowing their strengths and weaknesses. Um, the quarterback learns the offensive system and runs with it runs with it. Um, a CFO understands the organizational goals and how to um, get them there. So a lot of the times goals are in a business are financial. So whether it's our revenues this year are going to be this high or our net income, we want this number to be there. The CFO has all that information or whoever the top person is in your accounting team has that information so that they can back into it and help it turned into activity. So last week on Financial Friday, we talked about Vision 2020, but more importantly, we talked about how do you back into that? How do you get this big audacious goal and how do you make that into daily habits that you can accomplish and things that you can do? So your uh, CFO can help you do that. So they can say, okay, you guys wanna hit a billion dollars in revenue this year. And last year we did, 850,000, that's not right, 850 million, let's hope, um, or whatever it is. Whatever it is, the CFO can can disseminate that information and um, hopefully, hopefully they can anyway. Um, the other thing that the quarterback does is they study, fil they study film and are able to read the opponent's defensive schemes and anticipate their likely moves. So why this relates to a CFO is a lot of times the CFO is versed in um, regular law, so corporate law, tax law, um, employment law. Those are the, th are the three that are most common because a lot of times the CFO will, some will not a lot of times, sometimes, probably more than 50% in a medium-sized business, the CFO will supervise HR and IT and those other administrative services. 
So they have to know enough to know when we should raise our hand, when we should call our attorney, when we should call our tax advisor. So their knowledge of the game or those things that could hook us up, um, hang us up or slow us down are important and are a part of it as well. Um, the NFL quarterback will stay calm and miss pressure and make wise decisions about how best to distribute the ball. For the CFO, usually they make decisions based on facts and figures and, and try to take the emotion out of it and be more objective. The quarterback is the ability to scan the entire field to find an open receiver. Um, because of their position as a CFO, they can see the IRS coming from the left and the bank coming from the right. And so we talked a little bit about um, those being as barriers and things so that your, CF or your CFO can see that and other people won't, not because they can't, just because they're focused on their part. So if I'm an operations manager, I'm focused on those pieces of the business and I might not be focused on the fact that if we make this decision, this will hinder this other decision in the future and that's really what good CFOs will do is be able to see those peripheral issues that could come up in the future. Um, the quarterback is uh, has an ability to lead the team, the team back to victory in the fourth quarter. Um, for a CFO, they're coordinating every step so they can reach the goals of the organization while overcoming hurdles of regulators. A quarterback openly shares appreciation and all success with the other members of the team. Um, there's so much to know as the CFO that they know they can't do it alone and the whole team needs to work together, whether that be the offensive line that we talked about and providing accurate and timely information or those other advisors like the bankers and the tax um, CPAs that really are going to help move the ball forward and help move your team forward. So those are super important too. Um, and then for the last one that I talk about here is the quarterback rises to the occasion in all games, even more so in big games. And the CFO touches everything. So often the CFO is in charge of those things that we talked about and um, at the table for operational decisions for that. So a few things that I wanted to dig a little bit deeper on in our time together is the offense, um, knowledge of the offense. So the CFO knows the offense. So we talked about that question, how good is your team at preparing timely and accurate information? How good is your team, your offensive line doing so that you can make good business decisions? That's, that's the hugest thing. So if your offensive line is giving out every play, every time that you need to make a decision and you need somebody else involved and they're just letting others get at your organization, whether it be bankers, other regulatory bodies, or even the competitors because you're not using good information to make decisions, that's the number one thing that you got to get under control is making sure you have a solid offensive line that's giving you accurate information that you can make decisions off of. The other thing that um, those people are doing or your quarterback is doing is, is your tax advisor comfortable with catching big passes for longer gains or will they only work in the few yards off the line? So if you watch football, there's some um, receivers that are really good in that five to 15 yards off the line and then there's some that are better beyond 15 yards. And it just kind of depends on their style and the QB's comfort with them throwing them, them the ball and their comfort. And it's probably just speed off the line, but I'm not gonna pretend like I know a lot about football. Um, but it is important to know your tax advisor's tolerance for risk. And as well, they need to know your tolerance for risk as well. So but that's something that is important and that the CFO should know. And then the other question about your um, running back or about your banker who's on your team, um, does your banker get creative in weaving in and out of the challenge that they present, that are presented to them based on your business? So say that I have a renewal coming up and I 
and our financials are not where they should be for that renewal. So say we're out of compliance on one of our covenants and your banker should be working with you throughout your relationship to figure out how can they maybe modify the deal to make it still work for you and um, work for them as well. So can they weave in and out of the people who are trying to tackle them? Can they be on your side and move the ball far enough down the field for you to continue to do business well? And then the other, the other important thing about being on offense, being the quarterback is the, the viewpoint, the vantage point. So if you think about um, everybody lining up on the line in their stance position and the quarterback's the only one that's almost standing up waiting for the ball. So he can see everything but the people on his team, on my team, on the CFO's team that are behind him. That's the only people he can't see and he trusts those people anyway. So I can see everything. I can see what's coming at me if I'm doing a good job being your CFO. All right, knowledge of the defense. So that's an important piece of being a, being a CFO as well when we talk about the, um, the quarterback analogy. So what is the competition doing to price market share? All the data that CFOs can get because we're data nerds, so we really like that stuff. And then will the IRS catch the ball or the, our safety, will they catch the ball if we risk it with a Hail Mary? Will the Department of Labor make us lose yards if our guards don't? hold them back, all of those things, if we're not giving timely, accurate information. And then the other thing that we really touch on is, is in the CFO position is the line of sight. Positioned over the field, they can take the ball, they can take, they take the ball from people that they know and trust, that controller that's prepared accurate, timely information, and then they can disseminate it to the people who need it to do business, whether it's even your CEO who needs to make decisions off that or a department head that needs to make decisions off that, a bank that's helping us get farther, helping us grow, helping us meet our goals of moving the ball down the field, or even our tax advisors. So really, the role of the CFO is to know the team, know the strengths, make sure that you're getting accurate and timely information disseminating that information to the appropriate people at the appropriate time to make your organization move down the field. So that's the quarterback CFO analogy that you'll be seeing more of uh, next week. So enjoy the games this weekend and we'll see you soon.